Hi everyone, it's Lou from Christian Faith and Fiction. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some more award-winning Christian fantasy books and this is part two of this series. So as I said, this is part two in this series. Uh, if you missed part one, I will leave a link to it down in the description along with a playlist of all the award-winning Christian fiction books uh, videos that I've made um, this year. There's quite a lot of them so I'm sure you'll find something um, that's new to you that you can pick up. Some of these books are slightly older so I haven't heard of them myself, most of them, um, so if you've read them yourself then do let me know what you thought of them down in the comments and also if any of them sound like ones you want to read also let me know so, in 2016, The Five Times I Met Myself by James L. Rubart won a Christie Award. And the description starts, What if you met your 23-year-old self in a dream? What would you say? Brock Matthews' once promising life is unravelling, his coffee company, his marriage. So when he discovers his vivid dreams where he encounters his younger self might let him change his past mistakes, he jumps at the chance. The results are astonishing but also disturbing. A Time to Die by Nadine Brandes won a Carol Award in 2015. How would you live if you knew the day you'd die? 364 days, 7 hours and 16, no 15 seconds left to live. Like everyone else on the east side of the wall, Parvin Blackwater has a clock counting down the days until her death. Only At only 17, she has only one year left. When the authorities find out she has been illegally sharing a clock with her twin brother, she is cast through the wall, her people's death sentence. Spirit Bridge by James L. Rubart won an Inspi Award in 2015 and Soul's Gate by James L. Rubart won an Inspi and a Christie Award in 2013 and I believe they might be books two and three in the series but the description of book one reads What if you could travel inside another person's soul to battle for them, to be part of Jesus healing their deepest wounds, to help set them free to step boldly into their divinely designed future? Thirty years ago, that's exactly what Rhys Roth did until tragedy shattered his life and ripped away his future. Now God has drawn Rhys out of the shadows to fulfil a prophecy spoken over him three decades ago. A prophecy about four warriors with the potential to change the world, if Rhys will face his deepest regret and teach them what he has learned. Once Beyond a Time by Anne Tatlock won a Christie Award in 2015. It's 1968 and Sheldon and Meg Crane have just moved their family from Pennsylvania to the small town of Black Mountain, NC. Sheldon has recently resigned from the ministry after an affair. He will now be a used car salesman at his brother-in-law's auto dealership. Sheldon is burdened by his wife's unwillingness to forgive and his daughter's anger over his, his, family, over his moving the family to Barney's Five Country. On top of that, his oldest son is in Vietnam. The only reasonably happy member of the family is his eight-year-old son, Digger. After settling in an old house high on the side of a mountain, the family discovers their new home is no ordinary place. It's a place where all of time is happening at once, so that the family can occasionally see and speak with people who have lived there before, or who will live there in the future. A Cast of Stones by Patrick W. Carr won a Carol Award in 2014. The fate of the kingdom awaits the cast of stones. In the backwater village of Calloford, roustabout Errol Stone is enlisted by a church messenger arriving with urgent missives, missives, missives for the hermit priest in the hills. Eager for coin, Errol agrees to what he thinks will be an easy task, but soon finds himself hunted by deadly assassins. Anomaly by Krista McGee won an Inspi Award in 2014. Tali has 15 minutes and 23 seconds left to live. The toxic gas that will complete her annihilation is invading her bloodstream, but she is not afraid. Tali is different from others in the state. She feels things. She asks questions. And in the state, this is not tolerated. The ten scientists who survived the nuclear war that destroyed the world above believe that emotion was at the core of what went wrong. 
and they have genetically removed it from the citizens that they have since created. Tali has kept her malformation secret from those who have been who have monitored her for the, the most of her life. But when she receives an ancient piece of music to record as her community's assigned musician, she can no longer keep her emotions secreted away. Dragon Witch by Anne Elizabeth Stengel won a Christie Award in 2014, and this is book five in the Tales of Goldstone Wood. And Veiled Rose by Anne Elizabeth Stengel won a Christie Award in 2012. And the description for book one in that series reads... The Dragon King seeks his princess, but who dares to stop him? Princess Una of Paramvir has come of age and will soon marry. She dreams of a charming prince, but when her first suitor arrives, he's not what she'd hoped. Prince Ethelbald of mysterious Father's Shore has travelled a great distance to prove his love and also to bring hushed warnings of danger. A dragon is rumoured to be on the hunt and blazing a path of terror. Una, smitten instead by a more dashing prince, refuses Ethelbald's offer and ignores his cautions with dire consequences. Day Star by Cathy Tyers won a Carol Award in 2013, and this is book five in the Firebird series. So book one uh, reads, Her death was expected, but something more powerful kept her alive. Lady Fa Firebird was born a princess in the royal family of Natai, because of her birthplace in the family, however, her life is expendable. Honourable suicide is the highest calling she could hope to attain. When she is chosen to lead an attack on the neighbouring planet of Viron, her death is expected. She is taken prisoner during the battle and is held by the enemy. With her own people seeking her sacrifice, Firebird must choose between two worlds before she can carp out her new destiny. And finally, Broken Sight by Steve... Rizaza won a Carol Award in 2012, and this is book 2.5 in the Face of the Deep series. So the description of book one reads, Baden picked up the wrong book. In the far future, the civilised worlds have finally been freed of the curse of religion. Tolerance now rules the five colonies. Thanks to the secret police, no one has been bothered by so much as a hymn in two generations, much less a Torah, Quran, or that most dangerous of books, a Bible. Baden is a teenager with an attitude. He spends his spare time salvaging wrecks in deep space, claiming for himself whatever the pirates leave behind. One day, Baden finds a book, a strange and very old book, preserved carefully against the ravages of deep space. Thinking he'll become rich if only, the if only for the value of the paper, he takes it. He counts himself lucky beyond all imagining until it begins talking to him. Okay guys, that is all of the books in the uh, fantasy, sci-fi and speculative um, genre that I have for you. It, as I said, if you have read any of these, let me know. And if you would read any of these, let me know down in the comments. I've got one more video in this series to come next month, so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that one. And take a look at the playlist if you have missed any of the previous videos. Okay, I hope you have a really great reading week and until next time, God bless. Bye.